What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got my first smartphone in for 2017, the LG G6. A phone that has given a first glance as to what to expect from flagship smartphones this year, including the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus set to release later this month. If you guys would like to see me compare that with the LG G6 and the iPhones as well, go ahead and leave a like on this video and drop a comment down below. So I think it's fair to say that this is a bounce back year for LG. The G5 wasn't horrible by any means, but it just wasn't up to standard for a 2016 phone, especially at a flagship caliber. From the dim display, an unappealing design, and a questionable build quality, its biggest issue wasn't the modularity itself, but a combination of bad execution on new features while failing to nail down the basics first. The previous phone to the G5, the LG G4, was one of my favorite of the year because it had all of the basics down and it just seemed like the phone itself was simple but effective. With the reputation that the G5 had left in consumers for a flagship phone, LG really had to go above and beyond this year. I can tell you that for the most part, the G6 has gone back and perfected the basics, but the biggest lingering question is, has LG done enough in the span of one year to compete with the likes of Samsung and Apple's offerings? Let's begin with the hardware. So the phone itself from behind looks much reminiscent of the LG V20 and the G5. It remains quite simple and elegant with the dual camera setup and the fingerprint sensor located as a button on the back. Aside from that, it is a simple sheet of Gorilla Glass 5 and is available in white, black, and ice platinum as I have here which is more of a blue tone. And the glass design in my opinion is beautiful and the phone itself feels amazing in the hand. A great way to protect your phone in the long run is to pick up a custom skin from dbrand available in tons of colors like I've done here, so I'm going to leave a link to that in the description section below. Measuring in at 7.9mm thick, this isn't the thinnest phone on the market, which you might think makes it easier to grip, but for some reason I found the aluminum finish to be extremely slippery and I nearly dropped this phone a few times. On the bottom you're going to find a USB-C port for charging and syncing as well as the speakers. LG has also chosen to keep the headphone jack which is found on the top. The phone is almost 5.9 inches tall by 2.8 inches wide, which I feel is the perfect middle ground for most people. With a screen to body ratio of almost 80%, there is barely a border that goes around the edge, which allows you to have a large screen while being still manageable. The phone is without a doubt one hand usable, and the button located on the back is easy to access and the fingerprint sensor was responsive. We finally also have an IP68 water resistant rating, which is great to see and something that should be expected of all flagships in 2017. The display on the other hand is 5.7 inches with a resolution of 2880 by 1440 which is a 564 ppi. It's an IPS LCD display and despite it not being an AMOLED there's still good contrast, dark blacks, it's vibrant, it's sharp, and I can tell you that it's a huge improvement from the display on the LG G5 which was what I described as dim. With that being said I can't wait until the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus comes out to compare side by side as to how this display stacks up. The phone also has Dolby Vision and HDR10 support which is nice to see as a future proofing feature, but for now it remains subjective to compatible content and how you want to take advantage of that. But the specialty of this display isn't the screen itself, but instead its size. In 2016, 2560 by 1440 at a 16 to 9 ratio was what you should expect out of a flagship smartphone. In the past you might remember the LG V series with the V10 and V20 having secondary displays just for notifications, but the G6 along with the Samsungs that are coming out at the end of the month have an 18 to 9 aspect ratio. The reason why the form factor of the phone is still manageable is because it takes up the space that would have been the top and bottom chin that we've seen in the past. To be honest, before I had a hands-on with the phone, I wasn't too crazy about it or excited about it, but I actually quite enjoy it based on just the few features that are specifically available because of this extra screen real estate. Although multitasking isn't new by any means, it is one of the things that I use quite a bit on the LG G6 because of the additional screen real estate which allowed you to have two square windows that are the same size, while not feeling extremely constrained as you would have with a 16-9 display. From what I can tell you, the only big drawback is if you picked up the platinum or white LG G6 and you're trying to watch a 16 to 9 movie with the black borders on the side, it just isn't as immersive. So unless you really love the platinum, I would suggest you pick up the black model for this phone. When it comes to the specs, the LG G6 uses a Snapdragon 821 processor with 4 gigs of RAM, and although there were some complaints of not using the 835 processor, I can tell you the performance is perfectly fine. For those who care about benchmarks, it scored 1805 on single core and 4316 on multi core, and being a flagship smartphone with still a flagship caliber processor, you can expect to get maximum performance in terms of everyday tasks and gaming. 
From my experience, I didn't notice any lag whatsoever, and when going about my daily tasks, I think it really comes down to the software and the skin that it is based off of as opposed to the processor, because with 4 gigs of RAM and an 821 processor, the performance is still top notch. Internal storage is only offered in a 32 gig option, and although it is expandable up to 2 terabytes via micro SD, I would have liked to see at least 64 gigs standard, because at the end of the day, I'm sure it only costs LG like a few bucks. The phone arrived with Android 7.0 Nougat and Google Assistant installed, and of course LG's custom UI. Over the years, I haven't really been the biggest fan of LG's UI and I know many others who have similar complaints. It once again has been toned down this year, but there's just something about it, whether it's the icons, the way the menus are laid out, that doesn't feel very inviting. The quick toggle settings are easy to access and edit, and the notification bar is as expected. The phone itself was snappy and responsive with minimal stutters in the week I've had it. Due to the aspect ratio of 18 to 9, many developers have not updated their apps to fully support the new resolution. Within the settings, there's an option to select how you would like the apps to scale specifically, and I noticed that for the most part in Twitter, Facebook, and list related apps in general, there wasn't any issues whatsoever, and in fact the extra screen space was great. Especially for someone like me who uses a ton of social media throughout the day where I just scroll endlessly. To wrap things up though, LG's UX 6.0 skin is not my favorite but could definitely be worse. And the retail unit has been very stable aside from some stutters in the camera app, and it received its first update out of the box. The battery size of 3300 mAh is respectable but not impressive, and I found myself getting no more than a day with a screen on time of about 4.5 hours, but this is going to be subjective depending on the model and carrier that your phone is from. In my case, the Canadian model didn't have any bloatware or anything whatsoever except for the standard LG apps that come pre-installed, which you're probably not going to use. It also supports Quick Charge 3.0 which is always nice to have, as well as wireless charging on the North American model only. A slower charging option than wired Quick Charge, but still nice to have regardless. The LG G6 comes equipped with dual cameras both at 13 megapixels with one being an f1.8 aperture while the other is f2.4. They both have a one third of an inch sensor size with a 1.12 micron pixel size, and contrary to Apple's approach of going with a 2x zoom camera for the secondary, LG has gone with a normal and a 125 degree wide angle camera. If you might remember with the LG G5 and the V20, I wasn't impressed whatsoever with the camera. I got a lot of complaints in the comments of those videos about the fact that I could have just used a manual mode to get a better result. And though that is true and I'm going to show you some samples in manual mode, I believe it's still important for a camera to perform well in its auto mode because the intention of a smartphone camera is to be able to just take out your phone and take a good photo most of the time. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't impressed with the camera on the G6 once again for a number of reasons. In broad daylight, the camera performed pretty well and it should. A lot of the mid-range and even budget phones that I tested out last year had decent cameras and for the most part performed pretty well in broad daylight. The wide angle is also a great feature to have and something that I think a lot of people will use, but what I had a problem with was the overall composition of the image. The dynamic range definitely could have been better, the white balance often had a strange hue to it and it wasn't able to sense the environment effectively, and the post-processing in the pictures often crushed the shadows, and although I am quite harsh on this camera, you have to remember that this is a flagship caliber that is over $700. It's competing head-to-head -head with the current iPhones, the Samsungs from last year and this year, the Google Pixel that had a very impressive camera, and I just don't think it matches up well enough. I will say I enjoyed the manual mode though, it gives you the flexibility to set everything by yourself and I got much better results compared to the auto mode but I believe the auto is still very important for a smartphone camera. When it came to 4K video recording, I was just as underwhelmed. The first thing you're going to notice is that the colors are way oversaturated, especially in the grass areas and once again the dynamic range just wasn't that good. The image was sharp and autofocus was fast for the most part, and I know some people do prefer the more saturated look, but in my opinion, and I think many others will agree, that it's just too much. The front facing camera on the other hand is 5 megapixels at an f2.2 aperture, and I thought the results were decent, but nothing amazing. The colors for the most part were quite accurate, and the wide angle is very nice. Last but not least, I want to talk about audio. LG's upper end V20 phone does have a dedicated DAC and that is a feature that stands out from most other smartphones on the market. The G6 however does not have that on its North American model and will only be found if you purchase the overseas model. Likewise, you will lose the wireless charging on the overseas model as that's only found on the North American models. The speaker is single downward facing which is quite unfortunate in my opinion and one of the things I would have definitely liked to see on this phone is front facing stereo speakers. 
So to wrap things up, there's a number of things I have to say about this phone. First off, it's beautiful. I think LG has done a great job in the design compared to what they did last year. The display is solid, the 18-9 is handy, the phone is well built and looks great in the hand. But with a camera that I'd compare closer to a mid-range smartphone as opposed to something that would compete to the likes of Google, Apple, and Samsung, along with a less than enjoyable UI and just nothing really special or striking about this phone that gives you a definitive reason as to why you should purchase this over the others. Although it was a great attempt by LG, the best way I can describe this is enough, but not enough. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and this has just been my full review of the LG G6, and if you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.